The United Kingdom has crossed another visible threshold in dismantling its retired nuclear-powered attack submarine HMS Swiftsa, with the Ministry of Defense confirming that work at Razif is continuing to make measurable progress and that nearly 550 tons of conventional waste have already been removed and recycled. In a written update highlighted by Defense Minister Luke Pollard, officials said that around 90% of the submarine's total weight is expected to be recycled in due course, a figure that underscores how the project is being engineered around material recovery rather than simple disposal. The effort is also anchoring a skilled workforce, approximately 200 specialist jobs at the Fife site are being supported as the methodical sequence of cutting, lifting, segregation, and shipment proceeds in line with safety and environmental rules. HMS Swiftsa is not merely another decommissioned hull on a quay, it is the first of the UK's retired nuclear-powered attack submarines to undergo full dismantling under the Submarine Dismantling Programme, the national initiative led by the Defence Nuclear Enterprise and delivered by the Submarine Delivery Agency in partnership with Babcock International. That status matters. It makes the boat a pathfinder for how the UK intends to deal with the entire generation of laid-up nuclear-powered submarines that were withdrawn from service in the late Cold War and its aftermath. The lesson set does not just belong to Razif, it extends to Devonport as well, where other vessels from the Trafalgar and Resolution classes are stored pending disposal. By treating Swiftsa as the template, Officials are aiming to codify procedures and timelines that can later be reproduced and refined across the remaining fleet. A symbolic moment arrived earlier this year when the submarine's fin, its distinctive sail, was successfully cut and removed at the Razat dockyard. That single operation marked the transition from preparatory activity to heavy industrial work and provided a concrete visual indicator of progress that is otherwise measured in tonnage and paperwork. For the public, the removal of the fin may be the most immediate proof that something significant has shifted. For engineers, it is one step in a meticulously staged plan that separates conventional materials for recycling while channeling reactor-related components through dedicated, tightly regulated pathways. The stated approach is to recycle almost all conventional material and isolate radioactive items under stringent controls with regulators and site operators working to the standards that govern nuclear safety and environmental protection in the UK. The logistics behind that approach are exacting. Conventional waste streams must be broken down both physically and administratively, metals graded and consigned to recycling, polymers and composites handled according to their properties, and any components with potential contamination handled within defined boundaries that keep workers and the surrounding environment within established dose and exposure limits. That the project has already removed and recycled nearly 550 tons of conventional waste is not merely a statistic, it is a proxy for the scale of industrial choreography required to take a submarine apart without compromising safety or environmental commitments. Where a casual observer might see an obsolete hull, the teams at Rosith see a tightly managed sequence that transforms a complex machine into quantified materials with known destinations. The government's description of the project is consistent on three points, safety, environmental responsibility, and cost-effectiveness. Those principles are not marketing phrases in this context, they are constraints that drive how the dismantling is structured and audited. A safe process protects workers and the public. An environmentally responsible process maximizes recycling and ensures regulated materials are contained and treated appropriately. A cost-effective process captures value where it exists, through the sale or reuse of recovered materials, and avoids the false economy of shortcuts that would raise risk or future liabilities. Pollard's written response to Member of Parliament Ben Obiesjecti framed the SWIFSA work as a way to deliver all three outcomes while sustaining meaningful employment at a site that has long been part of the UK's naval industrial base. Context matters for understanding why the SWIFSA project carries such weight. The SWIFSA class boats entered Royal Navy service in the 1970s and were retired in the early 2000s, with the lead boat, HMS SWIFSA, laid up at Rosith in 1992 under care and maintenance. That long layup period reflects the inherent complexity of dismantling nuclear-powered submarines, 
which must remain stable and secure while plans, facilities, budgets, and regulatory frameworks align to execute disposal correctly. In that sense, SWIFT's dismantling represents the conversion of a management challenge into a practical solution, the move from storage to reduction, from a backlog of obligations to a sequence of demonstrable outcomes. The fact that work is now characterized by real tonnage removed and tangible structures cut away is the clearest indication that the transition from planning to delivery has taken hold. The ripple effects of getting the first full dismantling right extend beyond a single hull. Officials have been explicit that the experience gained on SWIFSA will inform the safe and efficient recycling of the remaining vessels stored at Rosith and Devonport. That knowledge ranges from technical matters, tooling, cutting strategies, waste classification, to scheduling and workforce planning, so that future boats can benefit from established routines and documented efficiencies. In industrial terms, that is how pilot projects become production lines, you start with one, capture the lessons, and then apply them to many. The target of recycling 90% of SWIFT's total weight, paired with the ongoing tally of conventional waste already removed, offers a numeric framework against which future dismantling work can be measured. For local stakeholders in Fife, the project's importance is immediate and tangible. Supporting 200 highly skilled jobs means a sustained demand for welders, riggers, radiation protection professionals, planners, and inspectors, among others. Those jobs anchor a network of suppliers and service providers and keep expertise resident in a region that has serviced naval platforms for decades. While the SWIFSA effort is often described in national or strategic terms, its execution is rooted in the capacity of a specific place to carry out complex work under scrutiny and regulation. That blend, national program, local delivery, gives the project both breadth and depth, it is important in London policy documents and in Rosith workshop schedules alike. None of this should be mistaken for a simple or swift endeavor. Submarine dismantling is inherently conservative because it must be. The stepwise progression, assess, segment, segregate, remove, exists to make sure that every action is reversible until it needs to be final, and that every material is tracked as it moves from a secured hull to a designated destination. Success, in this context, is measured by predictability rather than speed, milestones that arrive when they should, with all the documentation they require, leaving behind a smaller, safer, more transparent footprint than before. The confirmation that SWIFT's dismantling continues to make progress, with hundreds of tons already diverted into recycling streams and a firm target to recover the majority of the boat's mass, is exactly the kind of predictability that builds confidence for the vessels that follow. If there is a, wow, factor here, it does not come from flashy reveals or dramatic rhetoric. It arises from the scale of the task and the ordinariness of its delivery, a Cold War era nuclear powered attack submarine, out of service for decades, is being reduced responsibly in a way that protects people, respects the environment, supports skilled employment, and captures value from materials that once formed a frontline warship. The fin that used to cut through the North Atlantic is now a removed structure, the hull that used to hold a reactor is a regulated workspace, the mass that once went to sea is, piece by piece, entering defined recycling flows. For a program designed to turn obligations into outcomes, those are the only, wow, moments that truly matter, quiet, confirmed, and cumulative, one safe cut at a time.